questions. Um, today's session is really around the marketing fundamentals of going to market with any any solution. Obviously, we're here on this workshop series to focus on business premium, but this session ultimately will, will help you go to market with any solution. Obviously, your the aim here is that you we're going to go to market with that specific specific one. Then, with the two additional sessions are um, held tomorrow. One is around layering up, so taking the foundations that we're learning from this session today and then just making it a little bit more sophisticated, bringing in different bits of marketing technology that we can use. And then the final session tomorrow afternoon is around a really kind of sophisticated go to market strategy with a full funnel campaign, how we can be really integrated with channels and the Pezzo model um, and different content types and using the full funnel as awareness consideration decision. But today, as I said, it's just going to be around the very, very foundational elements, the fundamentals, things that you kind of need to do in order to take anything to market. So we've got five key areas. One, we're going to talk about the importance of strategy and we've got a wheel we created the actual profile which we want to take you through. Then we've got just an overview on the channel mix and how you can start to understand what is going to be useful for you, what you have at the moment that you can execute um, upon and then what you might need to look at in the future. We've got some benchmark data from some of the work that we've done previously. So if you came to any of the sessions that I delivered back in November, December last year, you'll be familiar with some of these benchmarks, although I don't recognize any names. And then we've just got some go to market examples of how you could physically um, from a design content point of view, take some specific things to market. And then at the very end of this presentation, we've just got some very, very basic rough and ready templates that you could use tomorrow, today, in a week's time, whatever, um, to start to pull some of this stuff together just to be a bit more strategic in tactical activity. So straight into it then, we're looking at the importance of strategy and it's really important to create a go-to-market strategy purely because it keeps us focused. I think if we don't have a plan, it's so easy to go off on a tangent, not really have things that join up. You then offer a really inconsistent end user experience. It's then difficult to generate net new opportunities as a result and it helps us just purely understand what our objectives are and see if we're actually achieving them on the way. And then lastly, it just really helps keep people accountable. So whenever we deliver any activities for Active Profile or any of our clients or some of the partners that we've worked with, it's really clear that everyone knows their responsibility, what their role is going to be, and that we're all working towards the same success. I think if you don't have a strategy, it's very easy to yeah, just go off on a tangent and results just are not very likely. We need to be focused, whether that's a couple of channels, a couple of pieces of activity, or whether a lot more detailed. And then this is the process that we that I mentioned a couple of minutes ago. So this is an active profile created um, flywheel. So we've got ultimately four key sections that we look at within we create any campaign plan. And this is the process that we will take. So we've got section one, strategy and insights, where we're looking at what are our objectives, um, what was it we're trying to achieve from a sales point of view, from a marketing point of view. Ultimately, what are we setting out to do and how will we know if this activity has been successful or not? Section two is then around who is it we're talking to? So job titles, sectors, location, um, those sort of stuff. Then we go into campaign planning and physically creating what it is we're going to execute. Once we're all happy with that and we've internally signed it off, we then go into that design and build phase, where it's where we can be a lot more creative, where we can talk about the messaging. And you're coming back to Sab's point earlier around the house analogies. It's so important that if we've identified at section two that we're talking to finance people, that we're using finance messaging, we're talking about the pain points and the challenges, and we're talking about the ROI. Whereas if we're talking to IT managers or IT directors, we probably start to get a little bit more technical. We can talk about functions and solution specifics. So it's just quite important that the messaging ties back to the audience persona um, at all times. Then we go into creating that content and content with intent. So rather than just saying, we're going to put out a blog. Actually, what is that blog intended to do? Is that blog going to drive engagement? Is it going to drive opportunity? If it's not, then we're just doing it for the sake of doing it. Let's make sure that we are doing something that is added value, that's going to be interesting, that's going to be relevant. And then ultimately, we build that campaign. So we build the landing page, or we write the blog, or we design and write the ebook. Absolutely anything like that is well what's happening in section six. Then we go into the, the hardest bit, really, which is obviously launching a campaign and then just getting into the detail of how do we make this campaign work um, and how yeah, what can we test and learn. Then we go into reporting and review um, where we just look at the data and what what's happened. So just going into each of these a little bit more of a granular basis then, 
In terms of setting objectives, obviously people will be familiar with SMART objectives. Um, the same kind of thing happens here. Are our objectives achievable? How are we going to measure them? Um, and what are our objectives based on? Rather than just plucking figures out of the air and saying, I want to generate a million pounds worth of opportunity. Actually, what are our previous campaign success results like? Is this achievable? Then we look into who we're targeting. I mentioned a couple of different things there, but these are just some of the more targeted criteria we can use across LinkedIn, for example. So job title, location, company names, if we've got them, account based marketing, that sort of stuff, we would need company names, um, but we just need to think about exactly who it is we want to get in front of. Then there's the campaign plan, and these are just some of the headlines that we use when we do campaign plans. So what is it we're aiming to do? This is your objectives. Who are we going to talk to? Your personas. What is it exactly that we're going to do? Um, so, you know, are we going to build a landing page? We're going to write a blog. Um, we're going to do some advertisements. We're going to do some organic social email. Ultimately, that goes in that section. And then what are we going to measure? We're going to measure engagement. We're going to measure results, anything like that. It's probably useful to say if anyone does have a question as we go throughout, please put your hands up um, right in the chat, anything like that. And we're more than happy to kind of answer as we go through or we can save things to the end. We should have kind of 15, 20 minutes at least towards the end to answer them. Or you can reach out to Sabs or I afterwards this after this session as well if you want to. Then we go into messaging and, you know, are we confident about what we're talking about and who we're talking to? Are we confident that we're, our solution is addressing pain points or challenges? So if there's a cyber security risk within a business, are we talking about those things? How do we make sure that end users understand there's a risk and how do we make sure that our solution ticks it off and is going to solve it? So do we understand the challenges? Is our solution going to do that? Why should they buy from us? And what evidence do we have to back up our offering? Because it's OK saying, you know, Active Profile is an amazing IT MSP. Where's the evidence? Because ultimately we're an agency. I've got to then have credibility. I've got to be able to have case studies, stats that are going to ultimately give people the confidence that actually buying through us is going to be um, a, a seamless, stressless, stress-free experience. And then come back to content with intent, just various different options there, but then it's ultimately deciding what we're going to do and then what format we're going to do it in. And we can quite easily take one headline piece of content and slice it and dice it for a various different range of things. So we could create a business presentation, a business um, portfolio about Microsoft 365 for business premium. How do we then slice that into blogs, case studies? How do we create social posts? Are there any stats that we can put into an infographic? We just need to think about the different content methods we're going to use to engage someone. Campaign build is what it says in the tin, you know, creating the physical social posts or the social schedule, creating tests in the landing page, designing your ad copy and assets, creating your report and dashboard, email templates. If you're using automation, this is, will come into this stage as well. And then the exciting bit, which leads to the, probably the hardest bit of the campaign is, we get everything ready, we test it, go through internal QA, we test forms on the website pages, etc. We schedule all our ads if we're doing them, we schedule our social, we schedule our email, and then we go into that quite hard optimization process, depending if we've done it before. Obviously, if we have done activity before, we bring in insights from last time, we bring in benchmark data, we bring in a foundation of this is the sort of message in that works. Having that data just makes it so much easier to, to um, enact something the second time round. So it's just important that if we have that data, we use it. And if we don't, that we're just collecting data as we go through. So that constant campaign review is something that we do on a daily basis within my team as head of campaigns. We do that with every single campaign we do. So what does the data tell us? What insights can we gather from it? Are our ads engaging? How are we against benchmarks? Do we need to make any changes which we will call optimizations? And then there's just some things that we'd need to pay attention to there, which would give us a good indication of can we gathering, can we gather, can we gather insight? Are our ads engaging? Do we need to make changes? And at the end of this presentation, we've just got a little process to just help you understand that a little bit more. So the things we need to pay attention to are click through rates from an engagement point of view total spend, cost per click, cost per acquisition, and then just the most engaged job titles, functions, industries. Are we actually speaking to the people we intended to speak to? It has any rogue job titles got through that we need to, to uh, remove. Just getting into that detail just helps us focus on being engaging, but then also reducing spend if we're doing any sort of ad activity. Then reporting, 
we like to think of reporting as being very objective. What are the stats? Stats we can't um, really question, whereas the review element is, OK, hearts and minds, what went well? What didn't go well? What did we really think we were going to have what lacked? And what did we long for? Just helps us then regroup as a campaign team or you know, yourself, yourselves as marketing people and CEOs or yourselves as CEOs and marketers. How do we just get everyone on the same page um, and really look at, you know, if we were to do this again, what went wrong? Well, X person didn't do the assets on time or the email went out late, which meant, 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 meant everything was slightly delayed. We can start to really understand those things. Whereas the objective data, what's the ROI? Because we know the average opportunity value is this. We know we've got this many leads. The law of math says this um, just gives us a real benchmark to, to then go into the next camp piece of campaign activity with. From a channel mix point of view, we just need to understand really what channels like already exist, what data do we have that says the channels are successful, but ultimately the channel, mi the channel mix list just details the channels that we're going to use um, from start through to finish. So we're going to use a campaign landing page or a website page that already exists. We're going to create a social media calendar. We're going to design some assets that go alongside it. And then we're going to send an email to launch the campaign as well. And this might be all you have for launch for a very, very basic campaign. If you've never done it before, this probably seems like a lot and it might be um, un it's kind of uncertain about where to start from. But this is kind of the basics that we would expect to see from a campaign. Obviously, we'll go into sessions tomorrow around layering up and around being full about um, full, full, uh, fun, full funnel campaign, sorry, um, where we'll get into much more of the kind of the nitty gritty of how do we take these five tactical things into 15, 16 different types of content. The PESA model is just something we thought would be useful to share here, just so you can see some of the various different ways that you can engage someone. So PESA model is, you know, has stood the test of time. It talks about the pay activity that we can do. So LinkedIn ads, PPC ads, um, any lead generation comes within paid. Um, then we've also got end, which is more around the traditional public relations, PR, how we can build links if that's something you're interested in doing, how we can engage the media if you've got a really compelling story. Shared is uh, obviously social media, distribution of content, community building, any partnerships that we might do. So, you know, Microsoft might form part of that. Certainly if you're going to do a webinar or an event, you could possibly get it um, on the kind of the, the Microsoft events program listing that would come under a shared platform. And then owned is obviously, as it says in the tin, what do we have ourselves? Do we have a website? Do we create any video content? Um, do we have a podcast? There are various different owned channels that you can use through the PESO model, and they ultimately would form part of this channel plan. As it gets more detailed, it becomes less basic, but you can just start to see how bringing things together can help you really um, engage and delight a new audience. But how do we get there? I think it's, it's really important to kind of stop and think at this moment in time around we might say you know i really want to do a podcast i really want to do some partnership with microsoft or we really want to do partnership with an exhibition but actually where are our existing or prospect customers and there's two just two different sections of where we might engage them at the moment and you'll have additional data sources i'm sure but the most obvious ones from engaging existing customers come through do we have their emails do we have their addresses they may follow us on our, on social. They might be on our LinkedIn page, maybe on our Twitter page. They're possible ways to engage in quite a quick and easy way from a tactical campaign point of view. But then if we're looking at prospects, we've got to be a little bit more proactive. There might be a cost associated with paid media, PPC, anything like that. How could we engage prospects who maybe at this point don't know we exist or they might be on our pipeline or they might be on our um, account-based marketing target list? So there's just a couple of different ways that we can engage them there across PPC, so people who are searching, across paid social, which could be LinkedIn. SEO is obviously going to be really, really important if that's part of your wider strategy. And then what else do we have access to? So can we get GDPR compliant data lists? Are we going to any events and exhibitions that we could then use to create new contacts? So it's important just to think about, you know, before we set off and do anything, where are our audience? Because we can quite easily spend a lot of time, effort and money, which we see clients do all the time, thinking I really want to get onto TikTok. OK, that's great. But as is a B2B IT audience going to be on TikTok and are we going to be able to identify them quickly and easily? 
Probably not. So let's park TikTok for the time being. We know they're on LinkedIn. Let's focus on LinkedIn and let's be strategic in our activity and our mindset. So when we're thinking about what channels are right for us, um, let's look at our existing setup and what it is we're trying to achieve. So these are just some of the channels that we know are effective at engaging a B2B audience. So email marketing, what are the benefits depending on our platform? We can test subject lines, we can test different content within emails. Um, and we know that, you know, realistically, unless someone deletes it or moves it into a dealt with folder or anything like that, it lives in that inbox forever. And we do see from campaigns we've run previously and clients we've worked with on much longer periods of time, we will send an email today, depends on where the prospect that we're trying to engage is in the buyer cycle. So whether they're just really not interested at the moment, whether they are openly considering different solutions or whether you know they they decided they want to buy something. Uh, someone might open an email and then they might reply to it six months down the line and it is a real possibility. Again, just getting in front of people um, is the, the first challenge, really. They will convert when they're ready to convert, as long as we give them a reason to get back in touch with us at whatever point, whether that's through the credibility piece that I mentioned up front, um, whether that's just being purely lucky in terms of time, when we've hit someone, when they're actively considering. Email is a very, very effective um, communication method, but obviously it does have challenges there can be challenges with data quality issues, especially if you've got a email list um, that you've kind of acquired or purchased through the likes of Cognizant and anything like that. And obviously, if you hit someone and they're really not interested, they unsubscribe and you then can't engage with them again in the future. So just things to consider there. And that's why it's important that we consider how we engage with people in a position that's right for them. So if I email you today and say, you need to book on a discovery call with me and I don't know who you are, I'm probably more likely to unsubscribe from that. Whereas if you hit me with something which is top of the funnel, which might be around um, the reasons businesses are at risk of cybersecurity issues, I might think actually, you know, that that's relevant to me. I'll read it. I won't unsubscribe. Then what's the next communication that, that you're going to send me? Um, it just gives us an opportunity to do that. From a website point of view, obviously anything owned is typically kind of free other than the web hosting, the ongoing maintenance, the development. Um, but because we own it, we can use the likes of Google, uh, Microsoft Clarity or Hotjar or Mouseflow to really monitor user behaviors. And we can make changes based on those interactions and how they engage with our website, whether it's how we intend it or not. We can make some really strategic, but also very tactical decisions on how best people can engage with our website. Um, but a website is only effective if we drive traffic there. If we create a, a beautiful website, we go live, but no one comes to it. It's not really serving the purpose that we want it to serve. So we need to think about how we drive tra traffic through organic search, or, you know, otherwise known as SEO, how we drive it through email, whether that's existing or prospect lists, and how we drive through paid activity as well. Um, so whether that's PPC, LinkedIn, Twitter, any of that. SEO obviously is a minefield to get your head around sometimes, but in theory, it is free other than the time it takes to optimize and to get onto page one, two of Google and Microsoft, you know, Bing. Um, it is responsive to intention, which means it's likely closer to a sale. Although they do say something like only 7% of searches have commercial intent. That's 7% of however many hundreds or thousands of clicks, um, which we'll cover later on in this session in terms of search sample sizes um, that you could be getting a slice of really all it takes is one really good quality inquiry to come through and it can be the difference between a pipeline of nothing and a pipeline of £20,000, £30,000, 100000 whatever depending on your average deal size, obviously their deal opportunity and then customer lifetime value. If we think about all these different um, numbers, it can be start to be quite a lucrative channel to go after. But again, not without its challenges, it can take six months, nine months, 12 months to see some good quality inquiries. The sooner you start it, the sooner that six, nine, 12 months hits. Um, and it does require regular content creation, work regular website reviews and regular optimizations in order for you to really stay on top of that game. You know, it's still within the channel, not a well utilized channel. 
Um, so it's something that, you know, if you start now and you make some really good progress, you're going to beat a lot of the competition to this traffic. Um, that tends to be kind of the much bigger companies are getting a slice of it, but there's definitely a big opportunity for people to get into the ground now, create regular content, whether that's blogs, case studies, create website pages, sub pages, and just really get a slice of the action. Then from a paid point of view, we've got just three different channels here, which we're recommending that are really on target and we've had some really good success from. So LinkedIn ads is the most targeted platform that we can use at the moment. You know, whether something else changes in the future, um, it's definitely kind of our go to whenever we execute any activity, just purely because of its enhanced targeting. It's the only platform where I can get in front of the exact persona that I want from a B2B point of view. So I can get in front of an IT manager in a company that's 50 to 100 people and get in front of specific companies if I've got a list of them, location, sector, um, you know, all of the, the exact criteria that we want. We can get in front of the right sort of people. Obviously, you can take a horse to water, you can't make a drink and we need to make sure that our messaging is spot on. Coming back again to what we said earlier around the house analogy, finance messaging, finance personas. The challenges are obviously it's very enhanced targeting, which means it can be expensive. And that's why it's so important to make sure that that message is right. Because if it's not right and you're just blasting out, you've got a massive audience, you're just going to spend an unnecessary amount of money, um, which is why it's so important that like any sort of activity it just requires really regular monitoring just to make sure you're not spending anything you shouldn't be spending or you don't want to spend and that the message is, is right again some benchmark data towards the back of this um, doc to help you understand what good looks like and then just obviously two core ppc channels so from a google point of view it's absolutely the largest search engine which generally means there's a greater volume of opportunity um Microsoft, on the other hand, you know, less used than Google, but actually from a cost effectiveness point of view, we found that we can generally get, get a leader opportunity for a much lower cost per acquisition. Obviously, there's less of them, so you might get one on Microsoft, you might get two on Google, but actually it's, it's a much lower cost. Not many channel partners are using it, so there's a really good opportunity to drive really low cost acquisition through there. Both channels obviously are responding to search term intention. So me searching for Microsoft, Microsoft 365 business premium pricing, which we know is a regularly searched for term. Um, and it typically means if I'm searching for it, I'm kind of in that consideration or decision stage. I'm not so just looking at a general awareness or general information. There's a level of intent in my search and that probably means I'm looking to purchase within the next three, six, nine months. If we can get in front of someone there and then because our ad message is right our landing page is right we can start to have those conversations and we know from the partners we've spoken to and we've worked with the sales cycle can be anywhere from eight weeks to 12 months depending on what it is you're selling um, and the, the size of the requirement again though both are required both require regular monitoring just make sure you're not spending on money you shouldn't be spending but are a lot more closer to the sale. From a ad type point of view, then there's kind of three that we typically recommend for LinkedIn. You've got your feed ads. So if you've been onto LinkedIn before, it feels the most authentic, feels the most normal in terms of how that page interacts. So it gets in front of people more often. It looks and feels like an organic post, but it can be very expensive depending on how targeted you become. If you think about if I just put an ad out today to anybody in the UK with no exclusion or no um, en enhanced targeting from that, I might pay 10p a click, for example. If I then add in um, the London area, I might pay 20p. p. If I add in company size as 500 plus, I might start to pay 30p. And as you obviously add further layers, it generally does get more expensive, but you're getting your message in front of a very, very targeted audience no other platform that exists on the internet at the moment can you do that from a message ads point of view um, it's obviously a lot cheaper to send it's roughly um, kind of 50p or below a send it lives in an inbox forever but it's kind of a, you get a one shot to engage if you send a message and it doesn't click it, within the same campaign linkedin's not going to send them the message it sends it to one person only you'd have to start a new campaign with a new call to action for to get in front of somebody again 
but it doesn't feel like a one to one message. There's no opportunity for someone to reply. So just think about that message before you send it. Um, we can direct them to a landing page, we can direct them to a form. We just can't have that two way conversation. And then lastly, where we've had really, really good success in the past is around lead gen forms directly in platform. We know that IT decision makers are very, very busy. And when we've A B tested, which we've done a lot of, we know the engagement and lead volumes using lead gen for, for lead, using lead gen forms is a lot um, more expensive, but it's a lot more engaging. We know that I think probably a five or six percent higher um, conversion rate from from memory is what we're looking at, but it is a lot more expensive than a web visit. And we can only display limited information, whereas obviously on a website page, we can be very visual, we can embed, embed, embed videos, let's put my teeth back in. Um, we can only display very, very limited information on LinkedIn. From a PPC point of view, there's really two different ad types that we would look to use. So we'd look to use responsive search ads, which have replaced your typical search ads where you put in specifically how you wanted the ad to look. What we do with here is we put in a load of variants. So we put in up to like kind of like 12, 15 headlines, which can be um, about 30 characters long, really, really snappy short bits. So you might do Microsoft 365 for business, you might do um, business premium, you might do security, all those sort of things. And then we put in a selection of descriptions as well. And then Google or Microsoft, whichever platform you're using, um, the AI platforms there will just show different, different variants so that you can um, use AI to share the most engaging ones. Ultimately, it helps you to, with the optimization process and just helps you again, just manage um, get in front of people at the most popular way that engages them really. Obviously the challenges with PPC is um, it's very competitive for certain search terms. When you do any level of research, it will give you an indication of that. It will say, um, you know, this is a high competition, low competition. The higher it is, if it sits in the high category, you're probably looking at paying a lot more for a click, where if it's in low, again, you know, the flip side of that, you're looking to pay a lot less. But if it's a high competitiveness, it probably means that it's going to come with a higher cost. If it's a low competitiveness, you know, to the flip side of that, it's probably going to be a lot cheaper, but there'll be a lot less searches for that term. And then there's display ads, which are really, really good, they come with a lot lower of a click through rate and generally have a lower cost per click but we can really control the look and feel of them. So we can upload an image, we can upload something really branded, um, and we can just make sure it look and looks and feels like our business. We can use again, you know, different photography, different stock imagery. We can test different colors, that sort of stuff um, to, to do that. Again, alongside the more traditional display ads, we can do what we call a responsive display ad, which means we just throw in a load of bits of text, we throw in a load of images, and then we let the algorithms um, share different versions of it and then they start pushing the ones that are most engaging from a click point of view where they believe that it's, you know we're likely to drive um, more opportunity through that i have to be pretty quick uh, but hopefully it's quite useful um as if anyone's got any questions again just feel free to kind of put messages in the chat um or you know ultimately wait till the end or reach out afterwards from a data point of view, we've got some benchmarks um, in terms of both LinkedIn and PPC. So average click-through rate for a LinkedIn ad um, can be kind of around that 2% mark. We've seen from where we've worked in the past, click-through rates have really started to improve. So these benchmarks are around the data that we've pulled from the campaigns we delivered. So it's not necessarily in platform data, it's our specific stuff. Um, so, you know, the conversion rate on average from LinkedIn is about 2.92%, um, which is kind of industry benchmark, kind of 2 to 3%, I think, across any channel platform. It's quite a good, um, it's quite a good um, conversion rate. And then PPC adds 0.6% um, click-through rate. Um, don't know why the conversion rate's missing from there, but it's around a similar mark. Uh, obviously, different... Um, Ad types, whether it's display, whether it's responsive search, bring different, both different click through rates and conversion rates. And then we've just listed some of the best performing ad formats by CTA purely from LinkedIn on the right. So 
we try out all of these different calls of actions. So if we want to get someone to go to a blog, messages in the feed are by far the most engaging. If we have any sort of downloadable content, feed ads, message ads are really engaging as well. Um, and then there's just some others there. Ultimately, if we think about how we've listed those top of the list blogs, reports, ebooks are kind of at that awareness stage. So um, somebody who's really kind of passive, not any real search intent or, or kind of decision intent, they're not really, look, really looking for a sale, we're just proactively engaging them. That's the sort of content that we should be using at that stage. Then as we get towards the more of the middle of the funnel where people are maybe considering different options, they might be considering Microsoft 365, the Google Workspace. These are the sort of um, content types that we'd be using for that. So checklists, comparing the two checklists around your business security um, would definitely fall in that stage. We start to use case studies. We might do webinars. We might do in-person events um, in the local area. And then as we get towards that more bottom of the funnel where people are actively looking to make a decision, so they might know they need to go and find a MSP because they're not happy with the current one or they've grown to a position where they need that enhanced support. Kind of the free trials, discovery sessions are really engaging at that point. It just shows you the different ad formats that are um, kind of tried and tested in terms of engaging those people. And then we mentioned earlier just around the opportunities within search. If we start on the left, on the right hand side first, sorry, we've got some very, very Microsoft 365, Microsoft specific search terms and what the differences are um, across platforms. Other than Microsoft 365 as a search term, overwhelmingly Google has a much greater demand for those searches. Obviously, Microsoft 365 overwhelmingly is Bing, um, which is obviously the Microsoft search engine comes as standard on most Microsoft devices. Google is still the front runner for most of those search terms, but by having a, a quite diverse um, channel mix, as we've mentioned earlier, we can start to just kind of get nuggets of opportunity from both of those platforms. Just a list of some of the more regularly searched and some of the more generic search terms. There are obviously hundreds, thousands of additional searches that are made um, on a daily basis, and we do see them with the campaigns we've been running. And then in terms of the audience size, if we were to look at creating um, a persona list, like we've mentioned earlier from a LinkedIn point of view, there's just an indication of the business size there. So we've gone UK wide, we're looking at the IT persona, so anyone who is an IT manager or director, and we have just excluded education and healthcare because we know from experience a lot of um, partners that we speak to don't tend to um, trade with those sectors. So we've just excluded those just to be a bit more relevant. And then that gives us an 88,000 um, number. So there's 88,000 IT managers, IT directors in the UK in company sizes from one man band through to 10,000 plus, um, which is the highest criteria band. Obviously, if we were to go, if we were to go even more specific, we could say, "I'm only interested in the 11 to 50 mark or the 11 to 25." That 88,000 number would reduce quite significantly. And then, from a Microsoft Ads point of view, and we've specifically mentioned this because it's the only other um, real platform that you can use to be really focused from a persona point of view. So we can do UK wide. You'll notice that we can't do manager or director, so we can't do job title. But what we can do is person works in and then select the function that they work in. So it could be sales, it could be IT, it could be finance. We can bring out that persona and again, we can do sectors. Um, what it doesn't tell us, unfortunately, is how many people that makes up. But that does on an average monthly basis give us just shy of 197 million impressions. So. That means people who are seeing display ads, people who are searching for things themselves, and we're going to get in front of them. So these two are really, really just good in terms of being really, really targeted and focused. And if we wanted to have that targeting and we didn't and we want to be more proactive and not as reactive as responsive search, those two are the platforms that we'd certainly recommend that we use, that we're looking at being very, very visual across both of them. If you think about the display ad, is that pesky thing where you go on to buy a gift and then the ad follows you around the internet. That's ultimately the process we would take um, from a display point of view. Just helps us to just constantly be, in that, be at the front of mind, no matter where people are 
um, visiting, whether that's different apps, whether they're playing Candy Crush or whether they're on the local news outlet, you can start to follow them around if the display ad network um, is allowed on there. Any questions on data or benchmarks before we go on? We've got, I think, two, maybe three sections left. Still got quite a bit of content to go through. Hopefully, it's going to be useful. No, okay. So, we've just got some go to market examples. Then, so we've just designed up obviously tech data branded just so we can give a flavor of how you might um, start to just bring some of this um, go to market strategy to life. So, on the email on the left side, we've just got what that could look like. So, how we could brand up an email um, and start to engage uh, the existing customers if we wanted to upsell or cross sell or how we can engage net new contacts and then ultimately with any email that we send we want to link them somewhere so we can track engagement so we can track interaction so we've just got an example of the landing page that we might send them to on the right hand side obviously placeholder text you will want to bring to life your own proposition as a business you'll want to bring to life your credibility, credentials, build that confidence, build that trust. So you want to have additional sections around um, case studies, blogs that you're doing, any events that you're hosting. You want to start to bring all these in as well. It just gives you a flavor of you can start to see how the plan that you've created up front then starts to come alive in that build stage. Similarly, from a social tile point of view, we can just see a couple of different variants of how you could do it. Obviously, we've used Tech Data Branding again. We've got some stats led um, images here. So 60% of business owners don't feel prepared for a cyber attack, eradicate a risk with Microsoft 365, and then a very clear um, kind of general but regularly used call to action there. Find out more, click through, brings back to the landing page where we can then start to understand what people are interested in and start to drive them um, to obviously fill in a form request a callback, that sort of stuff. Um, just a few different variants of how we could we could do that. Then, and we haven't focused necessarily on hero content with this campaign, but just shows you what an ebook might look like um, and what you might do in terms of bringing that to life. You know, we've got a future-proofed business security today headline, and obviously tells you that that ebook's about how to protect against emerging and future threats. Obviously, bringing back to the the reality that Microsoft 365 Business Premium can help us do that through enhanced security, through sophisticated um, cybersecurity solutions and how we can really support remote work and hybrid working and keep people productive. And then uh, lastly, there's just some different images on how you can bring a video to life. If you're thinking about how your go to market strategy um, and campaign plan should be built out, if you've got somebody who's really good in front of the camera, it doesn't have to be professionally shot, but definitely recommend that you do look at it. It's just another way to test different formats, bring in front of the, the audience trying to go after those thought leaders, those experts in field. You know, a lot of you within your businesses will either be that person or you'll know you'll have someone who is um, really engaging on LinkedIn, is really seen as a an expert in technical and security and any of those things if you can get them in front of the camera it's just going to start giving you additional contact format content format content format let's get my words out um to engage so the title of this video might be five ways microsoft business premium can keep your business safe at night and then as we go into that we've just got some um some subtitles there and what that person might be saying so in the modern day you can't take your eye off for a second and that's why business premium is so valuable it is that i obviously you can imagine just this person kind of talking really coherently and in really engaging way oh and then lastly this is some display ads so again thinking about how we can follow the people around you'll be familiar with these sizes probably whenever you've gone on to probably most websites to be fair um most websites tend to have a um display ad function of some sort so again just how we can use some of the different messaging that we've gained and we've created for this campaign protect your business from the unexpected with microsoft 365 business premium ready to take your it security to the next level just some um provocative message in there to try and bring people through we'll start to understand based on how people engage so the click-through rates clicks leads that sort of stuff what message is working and that's where we really look at from an optimization point of view we need to do more of this less of this um, we, need, we absolutely need to test that because we haven't tested it yet 
and we'll start to understand that um, finance personas want to be engaged with in a specific way or IT managers, IT directors don't relate to this message. We need to try something else. And then lastly, we've just got some templates that we've created as part of this process just to give you a flavor for how you might start to lay these things out because it's all great me sitting here and saying you know go and create a plan here's the things you need to put in it but actually where do you start um from that foundation so we just got a very very rough and ready example launch checklist so if you're looking at going live thinking back to the basic campaign we did early on has the website page been created yes or no have we tested it against mobile is it responsive does the logo show is text cut off um have we created the form yes or no H how are we tracking this do we have the likes of microsoft clarity hotjar do we have that set up are we setting uh, are we set up to track conversions within google ads within linkedin within whatever platform we're using just all those very very basic tracking things which are just going to help us really attribute an roi and then from an ads point of view is the channel set up so is the physical linkedin campaign manager account set up have we drafted the ads have they been designed are we clear that our audience has been defined have we tested that user journey so obviously we put an ad out on linkedin or on google have we tested the experience that that person has so is the message consistent at every point or does the ad say find out more about microsoft 365 business premium and then we go onto the page and it starts talking about teams if that message isn't consistent, isn't coherent and consistent, we're just going to lose people at every stage of that process because what they're expecting to see isn't what they're seeing. Um, and then just the physical practical practicalities around. If we've got a five hundred pound budget, for example, is it set up to only spend five hundred pounds? Because if we start spending two thousand pounds by accident because we've taken our eye off it, there's going to be a difficult conversation somewhere. So just by being really clear up front that the budget that we've got available is the maximum we can spend just helps us do that but similarly have we set the budget up so that we can actually save these ads if we haven't we're going to click go we're going to push it live but nothing's going to be saved we're going to check in a week later find there's no impressions there's no clicks because we just didn't do that piece of work and then lastly emails have we drafted them have we created them and have we tested them yes or no and in terms of just a basic campaign plan template, we've got one of these which we've used um, a similar version of ourselves. So how do we just keep a track on things when they're when we're looking to go live? Just keeps us focused. So who's ultimately owning this project? Who's responsible for results? Who's responsible for when we go live? What are our objectives so that we're all clear? So for example, we want to generate 25 ebook downloads. We want to generate five net new sales opportunities and or we want to increase web traffic by 200 percent very very clear very specific uh, we can measure them are they achievable really depends on the data we've got available to us in terms of previous campaign results but if they're not achievable and we don't achieve them at least we know for next time we need to revise 25 down to 15 5 down to 2 for example and then what are those kpis that we're going to measure off the back of this so when it comes to reporting whether that's during or after the campaign has ended we're looking at what our impressions are what the click-through rate is how many people came to the website how many people actually downloaded an ebook how many people opened an email and ultimately how many sessions that were booked in with the sales manager or anybody else then we've got in the green section in the middle um, what channels are we using and again these are just some channels that we could use we think back to the peso model up front there's obviously paid and shared knowns these are probably the more basic ones that we'd look to use possibly not all of them so i've got yes or no but just gives you a flavor of what what should we be using so are we using the existing website are we going to create a campaign landing page specific to this um, and anybody that's done campaign activity with us before um, we will typically use a landing page for something specific like this so we can just start to test things we start to test messaging content and a user journey we can then give those suggestions back in terms of how we can enhance the existing website so you know the form nearer to the top of the page was more engaging than at the bottom headline text was changed or we did an a b test we tested two different variants variant two worked okay let's change the core website 
headline to be that text. And let's just see if that continues to engage because we know the messaging is right for this audience. Organic social, what channels are we going to use? And there's some different versions that we would suggest there um, from engaging with a B2B point of view. LinkedIn, absolutely. Twitter, we know it's more B2B than like Facebook and Instagram. Um, and then YouTube, um, if we're doing video content like the go to market example, is YouTube going to be part of our channel mix? And how do we start to generate um, an audience on there? Because that's going to um, just be another way for us to get our message out in a way that not a lot of partners, aka not a lot of our competitors are doing at the moment. And then paid ads, are we using any of them channels? And then we've just got some more kind of admin things on the right, but actually so important and probably really important that we're all aligned on them. So what are the milestones that we're sticking to? We've already signed a project owner on the left hand side. They're really responsible for everything on the right. So when are we going to create the content? When's the website going to be built? When are we going to do all the different steps in terms of sign off? And when are we going to go live? Just so that anyone who is sponsoring this or is you know agreed to sign off a budget just knows what's happening and that person who's the project owner can be accountable for it. What's the total budget and what's that ROI look like based on a three thousand pound budget? What's our opportunity? Um, if we're saying that each lead that we generate is worth fifteen thousand pounds, you just just a complete ballpark figure. If we generate five leads, our target um, return in terms of possible opportunity is seventy five thousand. What does that then look like as a ROI ratio? That's obviously one pound generates twenty five pounds if we can close all of those leads. Obviously, this is a campaign plan template which would be done pre campaign launch. So it's very difficult to know what the true ROI is going to be until three, six, nine months after the activity has been completed. Um, when we've got actual number of calls that were booked, number of sales opportunities that were followed up, number of customers that were generated. It's really important that we just have all that trail so we can see where people fall off. Um, coming back to Sab's very, very initial point in the kind of program recap, it's so important that the sales and marketing strategy is aligned and that marketing and sales both know what each other are going to do and that there's constant conversation whether it's departments whether it's individual people whether it's one person in marketing and the ceo for example whoever's working in those functions the comp they just need to be aligned and whenever marketing pass over a contact there just needs to be a very honest conversation around the quality of that of that contact and why it was good why it was bad so we can start to either get more of those people or get less of them and we can refine targeting that alignment from a sales and marketing point of view is just so important. And then in terms of campaign review, this is a basic template that we use here. Um, and that's something that we use within my team. Obviously, we've got we're gathering a lot more insights on a daily. Um, so these are just some very, very basic ones. But this is just some of the stuff that we will use within any campaign. So left hand side, we've got some overview data. So the date that the review took place, so this review took place on Friday how much budget was spent to date, what the budget remaining was, how many leads we've generated and what that average cost was. There's then a date in terms of when we're next going to review. So we're going to review on a weekly, it just helps us stay focused and helps everyone understand when the next time we need to do this is. And then we've just broken down the two paid platforms that this campaign may or may not have been using and then just some insights from a website point of view. So from a LinkedIn point of view, our insights were we're really engaging IT managers, IT directors and chief technology officers and the most engaged sectors within the last campaign review period were automotive and healthcare. We might look at that and say oh, we healthcare is not a good value opportunity for us. So we then remove that, and that as part of the next steps. We remove healthcare from the audience or we say we never considered healthcare to be an opportunity for us, but actually they're really engaging. They're really engaged. How do we drive that engagement further? Is there an opportunity here for us? Should we start to test different messaging? Should we start to bring in additional visuals? Then we've looked at what's changed since last time. So based on the last step, the last, the last next steps we took, the click through rate has increased um, from 0.34 to 0.54%. And then we've got some next steps that we're going to do there based on the insights. So we're suggesting that we're going to test sector specific ads for the automotive. So what we would do there is, we would remove automotive from the main campaign group, set it up on its own and just really focus on automotive relevant imagery, automotive relevant messaging, 
uh, and we just start to pull in as much personalization we can to make it feel and look like we're only speaking to the automotive audience. From a PPC point of view, again, just some kind of made up insights that we've got there around. We might have gone live with a digital transformation message. We might have gone live with a cyber security message, and we might have also gone live with a sales cost ROI message. What we found from our insights is actually that the digital transformation message is performing the best. We've been able to, since the last update, reduce the cost per click from £2.80 down to £2.56. Um, and we might have kind of got an, a, an idea that we want to test with the automotive audience as well. So we bring in cars, we bring in factory, we bring in anything that we feel like is going to be relevant to the automotive industry and put that into either messaging or visuals if we're doing PPC uh, display ads. We can start to test those things again. Then from a hot jar point of view, the insights we gathered from looking at recordings and from heat maps is that visitors are leaving the form whenever we ask for a phone number. So what we might suggest is actually, we, from a next step point of view, let's remove that from being a required field. If that's putting people off, how business critical is it that we get a phone number? If we can get an email or we can get a contact, there's additional ways that we can reach out. We can reach out by email, obviously. We can try and find a landline for the general reception number. We can add them to LinkedIn and we can just try and engage them in other ways. If we don't get a form submission, for example, we're never going to know there's any interest from that business. So then we've got no opportunity to follow up on. Whereas even the smallest bits of uh, intelligence we can get in terms of following up on a, on a warm lead, it just gives us something to go at. And then what we might find in terms of, in terms of changes from last time is visitors are clicking um, the anchor link that we added, which leads them to the form. So what we're seeing is we the last last next steps from the last week before, we suggest to be putting an anchor link when you click it, leads to the form. Visitors are then starting to fill that form in. But when it asks for the phone number, they're leaving. So we're starting to see that actually the change we made was really positive. There's now another hurdle in our way. How do we remove that hurdle? And hopefully we're going to start getting some of those inquiries through to the website. And then just some really, I suppose, insightful tactics in terms of how we go through that. What does the data say? How do we generate insights? And what are the actions that we need to take? From a data point of view, we've mentioned some of these already around what are the impressions? What click data do we have? How many leads have we generated? What engaged job titles, functions, sectors do we have? What are our email open rates? What hot job recording slash site maps and heat maps do we have? But then what does it that tell us? Because it's great to say we've got 20,000 clicks, we've got um, 9 million impressions, but actually what does that tell us based on the messages that we put live, based on the ads we formats and the content we had, what's performed best, what's performed worst, why do we think it's performed best or worst? If it's not performed great, what can we do to make it better? What subject lines are most engaging? And are there any consistent page sections where people exit, for example, on the form where it asks for a phone number, what are the common things that we're finding here that we can start to make assumptions on, which then lead us to the actions. What do we need to do? If it's underperforming, we need to change it, but it's about being strategic and thinking about, okay, I'm not just gonna change it for the sake of changing it. What specific things can I change? What is different to that ad which didn't perform from that ad that did perform? If it's the imagery is very different, if it's the messaging, if it's both, let's just start to test one variant change at a time. And then when it comes back to the changes since last time, let's list what those changes were and then what the impact of that was. Did it have a positive impact? Let's list it. If it had a negative impact, let's go back a step, reverse it. What else can we change and put the change that we made back um, whilst we start to just really understand how we get under the skin of the audience with the messaging, with the format, um, and just constantly test, even if things are going well, good can always be improved. A good click-through rate can always be a great click-through rate. A great can always be amazing. If it's only driving engagement and not driving leads, there's something we need to do to make it better. So let's test messaging, let's test the copy length, let's test the imagery, and that can be the difference between branded imagery and stock imagery. We found in the past that stock imagery, if the brand isn't very well known, or the brand isn't very uh, well developed, can be really, really impactful at driving up 
conversion rates and, and engagement rates. And we've actually found across multiple campaigns and multiple partners that there are specific IT related imagery, for example, that really drives lead volumes. And it was kind of a, initially it was a bit of a joke that we that we had internally, but actually we would try that image across different partners and we would just constantly um, get leads as a result of it. We would uh, start to test subject lines, different channels, you know, add different things into your channel mix. If you are struggling to gain engagement with just text ads and text social posts, let's bring in video, let's bring in YouTube, let's try email. If we've never done email before, let's just try different different channels and different ad types to see what works with our audience. It for the end of the marketing fundamentals section. Obviously, it's a whistle stop tour of what you need to put into a, a very, very basic plan. Obviously, there's lots of different information to go through. When we get into tomorrow's session, we'll start to talk about taking the basics, layering up, creating a bit more sophistication um, so that we can start to really just, yeah, go from kind of skeleton foundations to start to build the, the house um, or at least the shed at the bottom of the garden. Thanks, Oz. Perfect. Thank you. I hope everyone found that really useful. And as we said, you will um, get these slides. Um, in terms of next steps, then. And Nathan, stop drinking. <laughs> Sorry. So, That's not very dry. <laughs> So any of you guys that went on the technical session, they would have been receiving uh, two um, Microsoft exam vouchers uh, to gain some security competencies and uh, certifications. Um, we will be also doing a go to market guide, um, which will have all of the content in from this session and the next two sessions. And you'll get that as almost like a guide to keep to refer back to. And as Nathan said, as, as it builds out, there are other templates there that he will be sharing and we'll make sure that you will get those as well so you're not at any disadvantage. Um, if you did attend um, John Mitchell's session, you would have heard that we have got some marketing funding uh, that we want to put towards this um, for next half, which starts next month. Um, and what we're asking you guys to do is to put together uh, your go-to-market plans and come and present that back to us uh, and we will be um, potentially awarding either fully or partially uh, as many partners as we can. I mean, if everybody comes out of an amazing plan, we clearly increase that 50K. Um, but yeah, we want to give you a chance to to get your hands on some of our marketing money uh, and really take this to market with you guys to, to make it a success. So that was all we had for this session. So thank you very much for your your time and attention. Um, if you have any questions, obviously feel free to come off mute and ask them. Um, if not, you can either come to me or Nathan directly, or obviously we've got the CSP team email here as well um, that they can filter it through. Yep. I mean, hopefully some of you can attend tomorrow's session. Again, as we get through the next two, um, the layering up session tomorrow and then the full funnel integrated campaign, it'll start to show you how you can just start to build as you get campaigns live, start to layer on top, and just create that sophistication, and drive that real long-term value through different content types and whatnot. Um, two really good sessions, sorry if I do say so myself. <laughs>